Mr Farage, two minutes. Thank you. Well, tonight we're talking about the disastrous level of bluefin tuna stocks, quotas and commercial fishing methods. Not one person in this room has mentioned angling. And I think our whole approach to fisheries simply is wrong. Uh, we have a quota system for most of our species, which of course in mixed fisheries has meant decades of discards on a truly horrendous scale. And whilst I and everybody else wants a proper, sustainable commercial sector, we are massively underestimating the power of recreational sea angling to bring good, not just economically, but also you know, the environmental benefit of our stocks not being hammered in the same way. You know, in the, in the United Kingdom, just anglers targeting bass alone brings in £200 million a year to the UK economy, far more than the level of commercial landings. In America, they've got this right. They recognised on the East Coast that the striped bass was an asset. After a complete moratorium, they now regard that stock as primarily an angling resource, which has led to a massive boom in jobs uh, and, and, and boat building and, and really all those, East Coast, all those East Coast coastal communities benefiting massively. But what have we done with our declining bass stock? We put a total ban in place for anglers with, after July the 1st, a derisory one fish limit per angler, whilst at the same time allowing the small commercial boats to use gill nets to catch 1.3 tonnes per month each. What we've done is wholly disproportionate, uh, and frankly, we're punishing anglers who didn't cause the problem. And we did it, Commissioner, through a regulation that you, a Maltese bureaucrat, proposed, that was nodded through the Council of Ministers, that was not debated in the European Parliament Fisheries Committee, not debated or voted on here, certainly not debated on in the British Parliament, and that will turn now ordinary people into criminals if they pursue their Magna Carta rights. And I hope that all 800,000 UK sea anglers say damn the European Commission and vote for us to get back control and management of our own waters. Well, uh, thank you. Um, Mr Farage, there is a blue card for you from uh, Mr Corbett. Would you accept? You do accept? Yes. yes. Then Mr Corbett, please. Farage, as you know, the common fishing policy went through a major reform recently, hailed even by Greenpeace as a good reform. At that time, you were a member of the Fisheries Committee of this Parliament, and you attended, I believe, in two and a half years, just one or two meetings, at a time when all these issues were at stake, where major battles were going on. Do you not think that any remarks you have about the common fishing policy would have perhaps a little bit more credibility if you actually bothered to do your job and show up to the meetings of the committee that you're a member of? Well, nice try, Mr Corbett, but clearly you weren't listening, old son, were you? If I'd attended every single Fisheries Committee meeting for all the years I've been in this Parliament, I'm not a member anymore, but even if I had, there's nothing I could have done to help up to 800,000 people from our country who go out and target bass for their leisure activity. They provide jobs in coastal communities. They provide jobs in tackle shops and tackle manufacture. They provide, in many cases, you know, the real important backdrop for harbours and coastal communities. And this ban, this ban was brought in without being debated in the Fisheries Committee. So not, mu not much point going there. Without being debated or voted on in this Parliament, it was done by a regulation put forward by a Maltese bureaucrat we can't vote for and we can't remove. What I want, Mr Corbett, is us to have a proper functioning democracy and then we can discuss how we manage UK stocks. Nice try. Bad luck, old son. Well, uh, this was it. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you, you had your blue card. You had your answer. Let's uh, stop here and move to the next speaker, Madame Aguera Garcia, one minute.